OK, so um, let's keep this real. Most antennas are pretty simple. You know, we've got some coax, wire, al alloy, al al aluminum, <laughs> aluminium elements, and somehow we get the best SWR, all right? And a DX Commander is no different. It's just a ground-mounted HF vertical multiband based around, you know, fiberglass pole and several quarter wave wires arranged around it in a circle, all fed from the base, you know, with an SO239. And that's the concept. It's simple. It's well understood RF and it works. That's why I want to explain something before we go any further. I want to explain why I go into such extreme detail in my build videos, why I show how a how to crimp a fork connector? Why well, show you how to, you know, tie a stopper knot, um, make a fold over loop and heat shrink and shock cord? Because somewhere deep inside the internet, I see oh, it's fiddly and it's too many bits and it looks complicated. And the truth is, it isn't. But it can look that way if you've never done these things before. Now, when I was young, I grew up with tools and scissors and knives and knots and spanners, and I built motorcycles and I broke things. And that's how you learn, isn't it? You know, I know how much force you can put on an aluminium, um, you know, thread before it starts to strip. That's how you learn how, to, how tight a hose clamp can be on a fiberglass pole before something breaks. You don't learn that from a diagram. You learn it by doing it and by getting it wrong once or twice. Those basic hands-on engineering skills used to be normal, but they're not anymore. That's not a criticism. It's just how the world has changed. So why do I show you everything in such extreme detail? Because a surprising number of people have literally never crimped a connector before. They've never tied a knot that has to survive. You know, wind and rain and the sunshine and UV and time. They've never built something that lives outdoors full time. All right. That doesn't make the antenna complicated. It just means the experience is new. So my videos are deliberately made, my build videos anyway, for the person with absolutely no reference point at all. Now, if you already know what you're doing, you will skim the video, you will skim the guide, and you'll have the antenna up in four hours. And by the way, you will cut the elements exactly as per the user guide. You won't keep adding two inches just in case. Plenty of people just follow the guide. But if you don't know any of this stuff, I won't leave you guessing. Let's be clear about what a TX Commander actually is. It's a fiberglass pole. It's got normally, well, about six on average, quarter waves going, going up it, you know, in a circle. And each wire has got a fork connector on the bottom. It's got a loop and some shock cord on the other, and that's it. Maybe halfway up, we might put a little tensioning loop. That's just another loop. Then we have an aluminium spreader plate where the driven plates connect to. And it's all marine grade and UV stable plastics. Everything is chosen for cold, for heat, for sunlight and wind. Take the Signature 9. You'll need a hole and a bag of cheap concrete, you know, from the DIY store. And yes, I even show you how to dig the hole. Why? Because some people have genuinely never dug a hole before, right? And that's fine. You know, how deep? I don't know about that deep. We are massively overthinking everything. Same with radials. People get very stressed about radials. How many? How long? Do they have to be perfect? No. After about 16 six-foot radials, you've done most of the work. If you added another five miles of copper after that, you'd struggle to measure the Blumen difference. It's just physics. If you can't do 360 degrees, we'll do 180. Will you notice? Probably not. But I go into the extraordinary detail because some folks have no idea what good enough looks like yet. So I show it. Not because it's complicated, because it removes the fear. Now, about those bits and pieces, they're not there by accident. They're there because this is a kit. It has to survive storms. It has to tolerate mistakes. It has to be buildable by people with very different levels of experience. That's why the materials flex instead of snapping. Why the plastics are UV stable. Why the shock cord is professional marine shock cord. It stretches, it doesn't break. Take the Signature 9, it's self-supporting. There's, I don't know, a couple of thousand of them out there. And genuinely, we've never had a warranty claim for a storm damaged pole. 
That doesn't happen by chance. So when somebody says it's fiddly, what they really mean, it's the first proper outdick thing they've ever built, maybe. And that's OK. What I won't do is skip steps just to make it look quick. Because when you finish building one, one of these antennas, you don't just get an antenna, you get the confidence, you get the pride. You get the feeling of, I built that and I understand it. And that matters. At the end of all, all this, the goal is simple. You've got an antenna outside that you built, that you understand, that you're proud of. And when you call CQ, people answer. Right? If you want independent opinions, don't take my word for it. Go and read the reviews on Eham. This isn't clever marketing. It isn't magic. And it's not rocket science. It's RF science. OK, it's well understood and it works. So have confidence in yourself. Have confidence in the materials that, that I've specified and have confidence in the extraordinary amount of development this antenna has gone through since 2014 when I built the very first one in Bude in Cornwall. And over the years, every part has been questioned, changed, improved, sometimes thrown away. All those black plates, I don't even remember, we went black once. We, we recalled the blooming lot and replaced it with something better. Not because it looked nicer, because it survived longer and it worked. Nothing is in the kit by accident. And the detail in the videos isn't there to overwhelm people. It's there so you never feel stuck. So you never feel silly for asking. So you always know what good enough looks like. This can be as easy as you want it to be, or as hard as you want it to be. Take your time, learn something new, or just get it up on the air. But when you stand back and look at it, you'll know how it works. You'll know why it works. And that confidence carries into everything else you do in this hobby. So enjoy your radio, folks. Have a great day. And I'll see you on the next one. All right. <laughs> Bye for now.